in tiki's off today what's happening buddy how are you i'm good how are you what's going on doing well man so you know nationally it's gonna get a little play obviously here we're, we're more sensitive to this kenny galladay and the giants you know there's one of two ways this goes they 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 unleash him a little bit on monday and let's face it the, you know they, they can use some some offensive help i mean so maybe he can help them but the flip side is you try to create the culture uh, and you're really trapped given the contract that Gettleman gave him. How does this play out beginning Monday with Dallas? Yeah, I mean, my my guess is we find out a lot about whether or not he's on the field and how much he's used. If he's not used, then, like, might it be time to move on? Like, sometimes, uh, look, the, the best way to disrupt your locker room is to have a veteran in there who doesn't want to be there and makes a lot of money. Like, those guys can really cause trouble. And Galladay is, like, not a bad guy at all. And, you know, his comments didn't seem great. But if you watch it, it seems just very matter of fact. Like I agree. Yeah. Football. So that's OK. I don't think he was trying to do anything bad. I think he just wants to play. Uh-huh. The problem is if you cut him, it's just all the money. And like, you know, could you trade him? Like, I don't I don't see where I don't see how. Like, it's just there's really the only solution that helps at all is if he goes out and gets open and, you know, is real productive. But like. Wouldn't you think that would have been the case already, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's interesting because Dable, and this is what you got to respect, because these uh, the previous Giant coaches, they just they weren't wired this way. I thought maybe Judge was wired this way, but it seems like Dable legitimately is wired this way, where if the effort's not there or whatever's not there, you know, there's finally a template of accountability, which is a great thing for the Giants. But I, I wonder, like, when people around the league see, not that there's a lot of film this year, he's got two targets and he two receptions, 22 yards, uh, two snaps last week. Do people still think he can play? I mean, that's the biggest question. Like, because the contract is whatever. Yeah. Like, if the Giants are going to do anything with him, if they're going to trade him, if they're going to cut him, like no one's taking on the contract. So whatever happens, the Giants are going to wear it. And like, you know, this is part of the problem with changing coaches. And, you know, I was like, can't argue with the coaching move now. Zero argument for me. I'm just saying when you have a GM and head coach that didn't bring him in and someone else paid him all the money, it's sometimes hard to go forward. Um, so what teams are going to try to figure out now is, is it is it a bad fit for the system? Which, like, if you're that talented a receiver, it's supposed to be a good fit for any system. Can he still do it like the Giants thought he could do it when they paid him all that money? Or is he for some reason just someone who's going the wrong way physically and health-wise? So that's kind of the mission for pro personnel directors uh, and personnel directors in general now is what kind of player is he actually and can he help our football team? If something happens and he's not on the Giants, mm-hmm. I would imagine he can, but for nowhere near, yes. near, near the money. They, exactly. And then at that point, if it doesn't work out and he's fully tapped out, you get rid of him, and unlike the, the which the Giants can't do. No, I, I got that. Ian Rappaport with us here on, on the Fantique and Tierney Show. Uh, before I ask you about the Jets, I, I'm you know I'm curious, and it might seem like an odd question, but I I don't think it is. Do you think is it? A, and I don't mean physically; anybody could get hurt. But do you think it's a lock that Tom Brady remains committed to football this entire season? I do. Um, it's not. I mean, it's a dumb question, but it's not because of whatever everything that's happened. Like I can't pretend that all the other stuff isn't there. Yep. Like. And that's one of the interesting things about doing this job. And like you guys do it too, mostly because your interviews, you and then the station are like really good, but you get to find out about these guys as human beings. And it's not just about football and people have families and other lives and things that pull at them and all sorts of stuff. So Brady's got a, got a lot of stuff going on. Um, He is doing the best he can to stay committed to this football team all the time. So, you know, I reported, on Sunday morning that he was going to take Wednesdays off this week. He didn't because they got new receivers. And I also think he probably didn't like that. I reported that, but anyway, (laughs) uh, whatever, it's fine. It happens. It's what it is. Confirmed it on the record. It's fine. Yep. Too too bad, um, Tom. Right. But so he is taking some time. He is doing his best. He is committed to his family and to his team. He went on an 11 day vacation to the Bahamas in the middle of training camp because he promised his wife he is going to serve both masters, and I believe that he will this year, but then that will be it. Yeah. He just seems tortured. He seems conflicted. And yeah, he's obviously not a young man. He's he's in his mid forties, but 
there's a lot of variables he's juggling. So I, I hope I that get that, it. You know, I, I get well, it too. Hey, hey, listen, I wouldn't mind going away for 11 days with Giselle. You wouldn't have to twist my arm too hard. Let's go. Where are we going? Caribbean? Right. Where, I mean, where? my wife wouldn't be that cool, but if she <laughs> I, got I, to come I, and hang out, I think it'd be all right. Exactly. I'm just kidding. All right. So I, you, one thing that I was saying all summer, and I think the people who are objective and somewhat rational bought it. I think others did not. I said all summer, guys, I'm telling you, I don't know what this equates to win-wise, win but this is the most talented Jet roster in a decade. They've got speed, which is they have been painfully slow for years. They've got depth. They've got youth. They've got manageable contracts. Like, when I say that now, and now that you've seen two games on film, some good, some bad, do you agree with that statement that they've got some talent, like real talent? Yeah. I mean, I really think so. The only team that maybe sort of compares is that 10 win Ryan Fitzpatrick team from however many years ago that was. 2015 like, with, with Decker and Marshall and those guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is, that felt like a band aid. This feels better because, you know, you look at spend a premium pick on Garrett Wilson. What are you getting? You're not sure. Like, okay, looks pretty good. Brees mm -hmm. Hall. Looks pretty good. You know, I mean, there's a lot of the young, I mean, hasn't really worked out at tackle, but that's an injury. So who knows? But like, they seem like they're building the right way. It seems like it's something that's going to last. I have no idea if Zach Wilson is the answer. If he is, then they're good. And I think we're going to probably find out very soon because he's going to go in there. And we just saw Joe Flacco put up 35 points with this offense, this system, this personnel. Can Zach Wilson do it or not? I'll tell you what was interesting to me. And this is such a small thing, but I was at, uh, visiting the Jets before training camp and CJ Mosley walks by and I look at him and I'm like, does he look different? And I'm sitting with someone, Salah maybe, mm -hmm. uh, or yeah, or either Olberg or Salah. And he's like, look at him, like he's skinny. And CJ Mosley dropped like 10 pounds to be faster because he knew it was important. And because you look around and the whole defense is fast. And like, to your point, like that's important to this team. That's how you win nowadays. And to see a 30 year old veteran take that to heart. I was like, that's your leader. And that's a really good sign. I like it. All right. I know you got to bounce for TV purposes. Give me 20, 30 seconds on this. Cause you mentioned Zach. I know my answer, but you're my guest. So I want yours and everybody wants to hear what you think about this. Is there any situation in terms of pursuing wins, but juggling Wilson's development where you can justify Zach Wilson getting cleared and not starting? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, you know, maybe you could push it another week and say you want him to get a full week of practice. I think that's fine. But the reality is like if Joe Flacco goes out and wins, let's say that I have no idea, but let's say they go nine and eight with Joe Flacco. That's cool. And you might make the playoffs, but like, what does that help? Nothing. It's right. Like you need to find out if Zach Wilson's the guy he's super talented. I know the organization likes him. He works really, really, really hard, which is great. You just got to know. And if you know, and he's good, then I'll see you in 10 years because things are going to be great. If he's not, then you got to figure that out too, which is not great. Mm -hmm. Um, but that to me is the of all the things this season, getting to like seven or eight wins is not important. Finding out if your future is right now, that is the most important thing for the Jets. That's the only answer. I mean, that's the sensible answer. I'm with you. Ian, go do some uh, some TV. Appreciate the spot, buddy. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Good hanging, man. Take care.